Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. And I've got to say, I'm very, very delighted to be joined by a legend in the boxing game. I'm a big fan, um, Marco Barrero. Marco, ¿cómo estás? Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy bien. Gracias por la invitación. Thank you. Well, it's a huge fight here in Vegas, uh, Canelo versus Kayla Plant. History is going to be made for the first undisputed champion in the 168 pound division. What are your thoughts on the fight? ¿Qué piensas de la pelea? Que va a ser una pelea emocionante, lo que dure, yo creo que de, del 2 al de, del 1 al 3 se le va a poner difícil para no no difícil, sino para se va a tardar en descifrar el estilo Saúl Canelo Álvarez, pero ya de ahí en adelante todo se se va del lado de Canelo. It's going to be a great fight uh, from the beginning to an end. From the first three rounds, Canelo's going to try to figure out uh, Caleb Plant. As Caleb Plant, you know, he's going to use his reach and all. But as the, as the fight progresses, Canelo's going to find his way in and he's going to eventually just knock out Caleb Plant. Canelo says he's going to knock him out in round seven or nine. Now, we're in Vegas, the betting capital of the world. If you had to put a bet on, what round would you say? round. <laughs> Pues yo lo dije en mi podcast, porque tengo un podcast que se llama Un Round Más MX. Dije que Canelo noqueaba del 8 para abajo. He said on his podcast, we have a podcast called Un Round Más MX. Uh, he says from round 7, that's, uh, that's going to be the round that Canelo is going to knock out Caleb Plant. I've got $100. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Canelo is going to make history. He's going to be the first undisputed Mexican if he beats Caleb Plant. The first 168 pound undisputed champion. Where does that rank in the history of Mexican boxing? Pues yo creo que ya está escribiendo su propia historia, va a estar entre de los primeros boxeadores mexicanos, primero porque la historia que ha hecho cuatro veces campeón del mundo y segundo porque es el primer mexicano que gana todos los títulos en una división. Uh, he's definitely, Canelo's making his own story as now. Uh, he puts him at the top of the Mexican fighters because he's making his own history. He's now uh, being the only Mexican champion to win a, be a world champion disputed on that weight division. So he's gonna definitely going to be on top. That's the question I was going to ask next. Like, where does he rank in the Mexican fighters? Like, on Manuel Marquez, you've got Chavez, you, Eric Morales, some great, great Mexican fighters, fighters that I'm a fan of. Where does Canelo rank in that sort of tier of fighters? En ese nivel, este, ¿dónde lo pones? Bueno, lo que pasa es que ahorita no lo podemos poner porque es boxeador activo y ya los que él mencionó, ya estamos retirados. Eh, ocupamos que, que se retire y empezar a planificar en dónde queda la historia que él, que él haya hecho. Well, the boxers you mentioned are retired as now. Canelo is obviously an active fighter, so he's saying that we'll have to wait until he retires, and then we put out, you know, we put out a list. We see the fighters, the, the achievements that they did while they were active, because Canelo still has a long way to go. Uh, so as long as uh, Canelo is active, we, I can't put him on the list because we, uh, we need to see more of his achievements yet. Por los nombres que me dio. Because of the, uh, the names that you gave us are retired, so we just wait until Canelo's retired. Good answer. Can Canelo's fought four times this year. When you when you fought, you used to fight four or five, six times a year. Do you think nowadays that champions need to fight more than just the twice or the one time? No, a mí yo yo peleaba cinco veces al año en la primera etapa porque ganaba 25 mil dólares. Otra con lo que ganan con una máximo dos está bien. Yeah, I mean, he says uh, when he was fighting when he was fighting four or five times a year, that was because he was earning twenty five thousand dollars a month. Uh, a fight. So now a fighter, uh, you know, wins millions of fights. So one, two fights uh, a year, it's more than okay. Good. Well, you, you have got a fight coming up. It's for charity against the the Ponce de Leon. Um, yeah. Uh, how how's training camp going? You looking good? Estoy entrenando muy bien, muy duro. Mi hijo está ayudando de sparring y me está apoyando en el entrenamiento. Y la verdad, bien gustoso de poder ayudar a la fundación de Johnny Tapia porque lo quería mucho. Uh, it's, it's been great. I mean, camp, uh, it's not a camp, but we're still training. It's been great. I've been helping him spar. I've been helping in this corner. It's, it's good. It's uh, really good to know that we're helping out Johnny Tapia's foundation. And training just feels amazing. Junior, you've been helping your dad spar? Yeah. Does he take it? Oh, is that, yeah, well, there you go. Do you take it easy on him or does he take it easy on you? Uh, neither. Neither. We just go all out. Of course, we're fighting. One or two punches might be a little bit too, uh, a little bit too hard, but uh, it's always a good environment. It's always a, a good uh, learning, learning techniques, and yeah, I mean we we do give each other a couple, couple good hits here and there. Try and knock him out. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. Well, he said he said one day I did make him angry, I did make him angry because I gave him with a good punch. He left the ring with a headache. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's good sparring sessions. Would Would you like him to get into boxing more? Eh, nunca me ha gustado, yo le di permiso que, que se pusiera a entrenar apenas, tiene poquito, eh, como medio año, dos años, porque ya se iba a estudiar a Canadá, 
pero ahora me dio la noticia que no se va a estudiar y que está entrenando para hacer una pelea y saber que es subirse un ring. He never liked me. He like he never liked the idea of me training or getting into the ring. However, it was just about two years ago that he let me go into a, a boxing gym and fighting. I was going to go to college in Canada. However, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I'm set, I'm training. I'm setting up to have a fight soon in uh, January. So yeah, he doesn't like the idea. He still supports me. He still is in my corner. He still helps me out. But yeah, he never liked the idea of me getting in the ring. Well, <laughs> he may make the millions. Yeah. <laughs> ¿Qué tal, si gana lo, ¿Qué tal si gana los millones de ahora, efectivamente? Yeah, he, said, he said, what if I make the millions that they're making now? So, he's not against the... representante. 10%, 10%. 10%. No, 40%. 40%. <laughs> <laughs> Pero Oh, listen, it's an honor for me to speak to you, Marco. You're an legend of the sport. So, one final word on Canelo and Caleb Plant. Última palabra para Canelo, Canelo y Caleb Plant. Bueno, primeramente va a ser una pelea muy buena. Van a ser tres, los primeros del 1 al tercer round que se le va. No a complicar, pero va a tardar Canelo en poder agarrar el estilo de plan. Y de ahí en adelante, y pienso que Canelo gana del octavo para abajo. First of all, you can't miss this fight. It's going to be an amazing fight. Uh, we know Canelo's skills. We know play, uh, Caleb Plant's skills. From round one to three, you're going to see uh, Canelo trying to figure it out, Caleb Plant. You're going to see a Caleb Plant taking uh, advantage of, of his skills, which are uh, moving around the ring, using his reach, using the jab, moving. Uh, as, the, as the fight progresses, you're going to see Canelo moving in, trying to fi find the angles to hit uh, Caleb Plant and eventually just knock him out. Good answer. I'm going to try some Spanish now. Buena, buena suerte de 20, el 20 de noviembre. Buen español. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I tried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.